Hey guys, so uh, I decided to make this pretty top level, and then if anyone has specific questions, we can go into more detail. Uh, and I'll post the slideshow later if anyone wants it. Uh, it's pretty top level. So bear with me, if anything everyone knows, just tell me to move on. Um, in a nutshell, right, sounds is, uh, you know, it's vibrations of molecules and wave passing. Um, and adjacent molecules are going to pass along the sound. I'm not going to talk through this. Um, but the, the reason I mention this, right, is when we talk about uh, noise reduction and we talk about passive noise reduction, there's actually, you know, there's physical molecules moving. This is what passive noise reduction works with. Okay, uh, so uh, what people hear, 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. Uh, I'm not going to play the sounds. I know we had issues uh, with Jerry's presentation last time uh, with high squeaks and uh, deafening sounds. Um, <laughs> If you want, there's a nice uh, frequency sweep uh, link here. You can go later and check it out and see how well you hear. Uh, basically, the average person here is between roughly 100 hertz and 17,000 hertz, really, um, at, you know, after puberty. Um, <laughs> uh, as you get older, that goes down. You, your, high, your high end goes down. Uh, men also have a lower high, high range. Uh, so you know, as you're reaching the end of your life, um, Men's hearing typically is under 15,000 hertz and uh, can get as low as 5,000 hertz for really bad hearing loss. Uh, for women, just add about 1,000 hertz to that. Um, yeah, cool. Uh, so just to give you a sense of what you're actually hearing, again, referring back to Jerry's presentation last time as well, uh, with sound, uh, you basically have, it's added, it's a, it's a bunch of different sounds that you're, that are vibrations coming into your ear, your, your ear is breaking down those sounds, and what you perceive is effectively uh, those different layers of sound. Now in the case of the human voice, uh, again, I've put this 80 to uh, 4200 hertz range. In reality, if you cut out pretty much any chunk of that, you could still hear someone's voice. So if we put on a, a filter, whether it be a high pass, low pass filter, you would still hear almost perfectly intelligibly at almost any frequency. As uh, we discussed last time as well, phone companies cut out everything above 3,000 hertz uh, because there's no reason for them to transmit that data because they don't care. Uh, you can't really tell the difference. Uh, in reality, uh, I, I mentioned here there's this uh, sort of fundamental frequency. It's like the core frequency uh, or pitch of a voice. Um, but the majority of human speech is perceived between 500 and 3,000 hertz. Uh, so this is the like the core frequency range at which we're evolved to operate at. That's the the frequencies that you want to communicate with. These are the, the sounds that everyone needs to hear to get by on a day to day basis. Uh, now, uh, the direction I'm going to take this talk, I'm going to talk about sort of the, the mechanics of it, uh, and then how it applies to the world. Uh, to give it a little bit of a framework, let's talk about an airplane, right? In an airplane, you have uh, the sound of jet engines, you have the sound of people breathing, you have the sound of the air conditioning units, refrigeration units, uh, people walking around, babies crying, people talking, all of these different things uh, added up. And again, you get all these different layers of sound. You got low frequency sound, high frequency sound, uh, and the way your, your ear determines what you hear uh, is a perceived sound level. Uh, and, oh, that's nice. So I'm not going to walk through this. This is just about the actual uh, sound pressure levels, the decibels of different sounds. So you can look at it if you're curious. Um, <clears throat> again, the point being, uh, with sound, it's relative. So what this means is if your average ambient sound level is, imagine this line here. So if you're sitting on a plane and everyone's sitting there silently, uh, this is the, the ambient noise. And then you add on the sound of people talking around you. And you're just sitting there, that's the ambient noise before you try to listen to your music, or put on a movie, or talk to the person next to you. Now, if they speak at a lower uh, level than that sound, you're going to struggle to hear them. It may still be possible, but it's going to be really tough. Now, if they speak above that level, it's going to be much, much easier to hear them. And of course, everyone around you will hear that, and then the ambient noise will go up for everyone else. And, uh, again, it's an additive effect. So uh, passive uh, noise reduction is where we're using actually a physical material to reduce uh, sound reaching your ear. Uh, and there's a few different ways this works. Uh, you have the absorption of sound by material and the diffusion uh, of sound by material. So 
you can have material that's bouncing a sound around and it's basically making it take longer for that sound wave to reach your ear. And you can have other materials which are actually going to, um, by having either a variation or a density of material uh, or elasticity of material done in such a way that the sound wave slows, loses energy as it goes through that material to the point that when it reaches your ear, it's not a sufficient sound pressure for you to hear. Uh, <clears throat> on the other hand, um, well, that's sort of what I just said. Uh, uh, the reason that high frequency sounds are most affected by passive noise reduction is that they are moving at a very high frequency, right? And when they hit a solid, high density material, uh, with low elasticity, they don't, those, those materials don't vibrate effectively. So there's no way for that sound to easily pass through. So it may be able to vibrate those molecules, and then they, they'll, they'll transmit that sound. But each time it hits a different speed uh, vibration, it's going to change the energy of that sound wave. Again, remember, we're actually having pop, uh, molecules, particles, that are actually vibrating according to this frequency of the wave. Uh, oh, wait, sorry. Uh, now, active cancellation works in a totally different way. Uh, and, I'll, and I'll come back to, I'll build up on this. Active cancellation isn't looking at materials at all. We're recording a sound, uh, we're taking that sound wave, and we're flipping it upside down, and we're playing back in the lowest possible latency so that there's almost no delay. Uh, and what's happening is when you have this, this anti-sound, uh, it's actually going to cancel out your, your hearing uh, of this, right? Uh, basically, this negative amplitude means that the perceived sound to your ear is nothing. Uh, it, it's exactly as simple as it sounds. If you remember Jerry's presentation last time, I don't know how many of everyone was here last time. Uh, why not make it interesting? As a show of hands, how many people were here last time? Okay, maybe 60%. Cool. Uh, anyway, so basically what's happening is we're actually taking a sound wave, you can, you can, this mathematical representation, flipping it over, and playing it back at the same time as the original source sound. By doing that, again, you get this canceled sound, and you perceive less sound. Uh, this active cancellation is working on low frequency sounds. Um, and the reason that we're working with low frequencies is A, we've already got high frequency covered with passive noise reduction, uh, and B, it's easier because these frequencies are moving slower, and there's a delay, right? Whether you're using an analog circuit, which processes much quicker than a digital circuit, uh, either way, uh, there's a delay. So using low, doing this at low frequency is much easier than doing it, let's say, you know, 15,000 hertz. It's going to be very, very difficult to process that sound quickly enough and still be in phase so that it lines up to cancel out that sound. Uh, so uh, let's, uh, let's talk about some real-world examples, a pair of noise-canceling headphones like Bose. Everybody knows Bose headphones. They're sort of the cream of the crop. Uh, in the last 15 years, the Bose technology has not changed at all. They might have a slightly more power efficient uh, circuit that's processing that, that noise cancellation. So it goes a minute difference, slightly lower latency. They might have uh, less power consumption because the circuit's more efficient. It's using materials that uh, absorb less uh, energy as it passes through. But the reality is very, very little has changed. So. When you put on a pair of Bose headphones, you have a seal around your ears, right? You've got that cushion, that plastic. These are all materials that are specifically chosen to absorb passively high-frequency sounds. Uh, so this is one seal that physically it creates a barrier between your eardrum and high-frequency sound. Low-frequency sound is still going to be somewhat reduced, but substantially less than high-frequency sound. Now, on top of that, you then have this active noise-canceling system. Where you have a microphone, or actually, in the case of Bose, uh, two microphones in each ear, uh, and these microphones, not including a voice mic, uh, these microphones are going to, uh, at different points on the headphones, interpret incoming sound, uh, invert those sound waves, and in addition to that, they're going to be calculating the, the echoes inside your that, that enclosure, that little uh, pocket in between the headphone and your ear, and it's going to make a calculation of what frequencies of sound that it's just heard to play anti-noise for. Now, you have to actually understand it. This is very mechanical. This isn't some kind of uh, cryptic, complicated system. It's actually incredibly simple. It's, it's just a filter. So noise canceling, it's, it's, it's beyond this. It's actually taking what you're hearing on the mic. It's creating a filter where you're cutting off the sound that you don't want to cancel, and then everything else is being canceled. 
So in the case of, for instance, when I'm, I'm designing a pair of headphones, uh, our noise canceling system, we have effectively canceled, let's say, you know, 1,200 and uh, up of high frequency sound with our material choices. So anything below 1,200 hertz, uh, we want to cancel actively. So we're going to put on a low pass filter. We're going to cancel everything above 1,200 hertz, and of course there's a you know curve. Um, but by doing that, we're, we're eliminating that uh, high frequency noise uh, with the passive reduction, and then the active reduction is going to only flip the low frequency sound, so we don't take the high frequency sound and actually play it back through those mics. Uh, now, one of the challenges of a traditional noise canceling headphone and why it's struggled to advance is that inside this enclosure you've got one or in a few cases you have a few uh, drivers playing back your sound. Uh, and in that environment you're using a limited number of drivers that are tuned to produce high quality sound like music. But you, you're also mixing in this anti-noise which, you know, to the human ear, to the naked ear sounds like nothing, right? It's just garbled surrounds ambient noise, white noise. Uh, so, when you do that, obviously you're going to have signal degradation, you're going to have a reduced quality of sound. Uh, at the very least, uh, at the very least you're going to be combining two signals, right? And when you do that, you, you compromise on sound. Uh, but if we take it a step further, outside of headphones, in the, in the world of noise cancelling technology, it's been applied to server racks, it's been applied in noisy office spaces where people do, uh, they'll actually have a speaker that plays anti-noise near a, a noisy fan so that a crowded space is less crowded, or less loud, sorry. Uh, and in these environments where you have an open space with people talking, it's not that effective. It's really tough, which is why people use a lot of insulation. And when using insulation, it's very easy because you don't, it's not moving, it's not, uh, heat tends to be less of an issue. You can choose big materials, thick materials, um, that you can't strap on a person's head. Um, in that environment, uh, it's relatively easy to reduce noise, for instance, again, a server rack. Where you can have that padding in those cases and materials that cut that fan noise, cut the sound of, let's say, a spinning disk drive. Uh, now, in the context of a person's head, if you added on those materials, you can have, and I'm sure you've all seen those heavy construction headphones and at a shooting range, heavy headphones, or earmuffs rather, uh, it's just a thick, heavy material that does a really good job of cutting that noise passively. And because they're using such thick, high density materials, they're very heavy, they're very, very hot, but they can actually cancel a lot of low frequency noise as well. Now, in the context of a consumer, in the context of everyday life, when you look at earbuds and headphones, if you bulk them up with heavy materials and high density materials, they're not going to be comfortable, they're not going to be compact, uh, they're not going to be affordable because those materials are expensive. Uh, and uh, realistically, you're not going to be able to wear it comfortably for an extended period of time. Uh, so, in the context of noise reduction, when you think about headphones, I think this is probably the most common use case anyone's going to see this technology. Um, there's a few different things that different uh, people, different uh, companies do to address this, right? You've got passive noise reduction using advanced materials, whether it be foams or cushions or plastics that are designed with high density and low weight, which is tricky, um, and uh, low elasticity, uh, which is then fragile. So there's a lot of compromises there, and you have vibrations, which adds to the complexity. Uh, and then you have people who are applying active cancellation, whether it be with a single mic, multiple mics, multiple ears. Uh, and then you actually have people who add layers of white noise into your hearing environment. Uh, the best example of this is a company called Cocoon. Uh, they were on, I think, Indiegogo. Uh, and what they did is they actually created a, a headphone that plays your music and adds white noise so that your ambient noise level covers background noise. So instead of trying to cancel out that background noise, they just said, screw it, we're going to cover it up. You can't hear it. And the white noise, will, your, your brain will filter out naturally. You'll get used to it. So all you'll hear is that, that positive difference above the noise floor. Uh, now, in the context of big picture, uh, nobody is solving the problem, right? Uh, nobody is... I'm actually going to end up being much quicker than that. <laughs> but yeah, it's cool. Uh, in the big picture, um, 
nothing has changed because even if you have the best cushion, even if you have the best noise canceling, your nose, your mouth, your eyes are places where sound enters your body. And unless you plug all of these uh, entrance points of sound waves, there's no way to prevent the, the vibrations in your inner ear. So, I mean, think about bone conduction headphones, right? It, it cannot be done in any realistically comfortable human interface. So, technology has reached a point where it's already very good, uh, and to get much better, there's not really many compromises we can make. Uh, so, now I'm going to plug a little bit about what I'm doing, very briefly, and then I guess I have questions because that was way shorter than probably. Uh, so, what I'm doing at uh, Audacity is we're designing a noise cancelling device that doesn't play music. This is a device that doesn't mix signals. You don't have your noise cancelling anti sound and your music playing out of the same drivers in the same space. You have a dedicated environment that just cancels noise. We're basically creating a little quiet bubble on your head. Uh, and it's the closest you can get, short of again putting a bubble over your head. Uh, we're using uh, really uh, new, lightweight, high-density materials um, with the right relationship of elasticity and density and weight and breathability to filter out as much sound as possible without adding weight and discomfort. Uh, and we're using multiple mics on each ear, and we are using uh, the best noise-canceling uh, chips uh, that are highly efficient, uh, that do a very good job and they're being uh, specifically tuned uh, with drivers that just do noise cancelling. So in this space, all you get is active noise cancellation uh, on whatever noise makes it through. And because we don't have to calibrate that for anything other than uh, our drivers and our mics and no music, uh, those, those drivers are actually tuned to play lower frequency sounds much better. Uh, and there's no signal mixing and the quality of noise cancelling goes up. And on top of that, our, uh, our system lets you plug in any pair of earbuds inside this space. So you can plug in your custom in-ear monitors that you paid $2,000 to have molded to your ear, 12 you know, uh, uh, armature drivers each ear, uh, and you're going to get that sound quality through our system. So you get high quality sound and you get the high quality noise cancellation because you're not trying to blend the two together. Uh, but the reason that I'm doing this and the reason that uh, the technology has hit this roadblock is that the focus has been on trying to find the best mix of music or sound quality and noise cancelling as opposed to treating them as two separate things, right? It's, uh, the reality is that noise cancelling is a terrific technology that can benefit working in an open plan office, it can benefit going on a commute, on a bus, on a train, on a plane. Uh, it can benefit trying to meditate, doing yoga, whatever it is, uh, and the technology just hasn't been developed before. Uh, everybody's focused on just trying to match what's been done already, uh, and this is the first time that that's changed. Um, so uh, I think I've probably stumbled along for far too short, um, but I'm happy to take questions and go back over in more detail anything that I glazed over. Any, uh, yeah. so what are we uh, Not yet. We're, uh, we've got proof of concept and we're at the stage where we're looking for investors to uh, go to manufacturing and all that good stuff. How about the voice cancellation and the IEM interact with each other? I mean, would there be any cross disturbance? So, uh, yes, that's, that's a that's a tricky one. Uh, there's obviously noise pollution because there's leakage. If you, even if you're wearing a custom molded in-ear monitor, uh, there's going to be sound leakage. Uh, but in the environment of a space that has a perceived reduced, it, the perceived sound floor is much lower, right? In this space that we've created, you hear very little. It's much quieter than it would be in a regular pair of headphones. Um, the the result is that when you plug your ear, your earbud or in your monitor or whatever, in, inside this, there's a, there's a headphone jack and a cable management system. Uh, so you're going to, from, from an acoustic perspective, there's very little issue. 
when, when, we, when we stuck this on those you know, wildly expensive uh, heads with those wildly expensive mics in each uh, simulated ear, it's not an issue. Um, the impact of, of sound leakage, is, was that your question, basically sound leakage? Or? No, I'm not thinking about the frequency disturbance. The frequency disturbance? Yeah. Um, in yeah. what respect? Because your cross gas emission cuts certain frequency out. So these are completely separate systems. So the noise cancellation is, so imagine you're, you, you're wearing these uh, headphones, it's called Oasis. Um, use a, wow, it didn't actually change. That's pretty sweet. I actually changed it to show the picture. Um, right out. See what happens. Projectors are totally dead. <laughs> anyway, um, it's cool. Um, This space is just, it's, it's, a, it's playing anti-noise to cancel out the, your ambient sound and creating a quiet environment. So other than, uh, so when you, when you put your in-ear monitor in, that is a direct link to your source. So they're completely separate systems. So you basically have a noise canceling system, electrically speaking, uh, inside this headphone, and then you have your earbud, which is uh, a separate system that connects to your source audio. So electrically, they're independent. Acoustically, uh, it's uh, I mean, it'd be the same as if this was a quiet room and you listen to music with headphones. It's just a much smaller room. So what kind of reduction can you, can you actually get? Where like the specs on the phone? Yep. Okay. Uh, so if we look at Bose, they typically get 20 to 25 decibel reduction. It's pretty flat. Uh, no, uh, because you have passive versus active, and it depends on your environment and sound and so on. Um, but for the purpose of calling an average reduction, about 25 decibel reduction, we're seeing 35 plus. Um, and of course, it's an infinitely better sound quality because you can have, you know, truly high quality in your monitors, and uh, we're actually wireless as well, and we're using uh, Sony's codec, which is uh, about three times higher bit rate than uh, Aptex, which is sort of the industry standard. So you can get, uh, you know, pretty close to lossless audio wirelessly, and get that audio quality in a noise canceling environment, which just isn't possible with those headphones. Like they just don't have the frequency range to reproduce that sound accurately. So your, your high frequency uh, reduction is all mechanical, it's not electrical, it's not filters at all? Right, it's passive. All passive. Yes. And then you have your uh, sound detectors inside that, it must be, right? Because right. it wouldn't make sense to have an outside passive reduction and then try to compensate. Well, so what it does is it basically calculates the difference. So you have a mic inside and outside, and you can calculate the difference and net out the, the remainder. And what's the delay that you you can see? Like how fast can you react to? So that, that's a, that's a tricky question. But the, the short answer is uh, we're still figuring out which chipset we're going to go with. The fastest on the market, uh, as fast if not faster than anyone else, because we're a new product using a new chipset versus Bose is using the same chipset, uh, and that hasn't really changed much. Uh, the big oh, difference, yeah, there you go. Uh, so the sides are renderings, and the middle is an actual photo. It's a little pretty bit mysterious. Um, <laughs> yeah, we're not done yet. Um, but passively, we have a huge edge over anyone because you have an earbud or an in your monitor in your ear that's passively reducing sound, and a seal around your ear reducing sound passively. So that's twice as much effective passive reduction for high frequency sound. So anything above 1500 hertz, we're going to be roughly twice as effective as anyone else. So baby crying, you put on your Bose headphones and it's not so bad. You put on these and you're listening to your music and you really won't hear it. <laughs> Sold. <laughs> and so that 35 dB reduction or whatever, how does that compare to like the pass purely passive so construction? So purely passive construction can get up to around 50, uh, but the compromise is on weight and comfort. 
So we're still working with partners uh, on using better materials to see how close we can get. I will not by any means call 35 our final go-to-market number. I, I certainly hope to get close to that. Uh, our, our theoretical calculations actually were about 45. Um, so it would be a pretty big game changer to have a comfortable, lightweight equivalent to construction grade, you know, safer shooting range uh, headphones. And we've actually seen interest from shooting ranges in the U.S. And, uh, we're working on it. What, what kind of price point are the, uh, are the traditional part of you know, So just like, like the heavyweight construction ones? The truly top-notch ones actually can get to around $200. Okay. If you want to go for a cheap pair, you can get them for like 20 bucks. And so you're, in, you're targeting around that range? So, right, yeah, uh, short term, we're going to try and come in between $200 and $300. Uh, long term, our, our goal was actually, like if you want to look at a mission, was to bring a very great, useful technology to the mass market. And I don't see $300 price point as mass market. So my goal is to really bring it down to about $100 over the next five years. Um, but obviously that takes time and scale. Um, so, yeah, stay tuned on that one. I can read that uh, the environment is too quiet, like you'll go crazy. Uh, so, <laughs> so, yeah, so again, one of the, there, there's a lot of the, a lot of theories about this, and if you go in like an anechoic chamber where you have these really effective diffusing pads that will absorb uh, a lot of sound and bounce around the sound, so like you'll speak and there'll be zero echo. Mm -hmm. In this space, it does make you feel uncomfortable because like, you don't hear your own voice, which is weird. Uh, but at the same time, uh, unless you're in an anechoic chamber, because again, sound comes in through your mouth, through your nose, through your eyes, even though we're reducing sound as much as is realistically possible, with technology, we're not, you know, we're not sucking the air out of the room. So you're still going to get enough, you're going to feel the sound pressure in your head and you're not going to feel that uncomfortable sensation. Does that uh, answer your question? You won't go insane. You can, you can quote me on that. <laughs> so basically they don't work like uh, canceling the airplane noise, but you can still hear somebody talking. They don't so do that. They will cancel. Um, Let's say, for example, I'm in an airplane. Yes. It can, it's canceling the airplane noise, but if somebody's talking on the microphone, I can hear. So, again, the way noise canceling is working is it's going to create that anti-noise, and it's going to invert that sound wave. It's going to cancel low-frequency sound relatively easily. High-frequency sound through a mic, because the way that the, high, the, the active noise canceling is cutting off high-frequency, that's not coming through the mic, and the passive noise reduction will block that out. Just like any other pair of noise canceling headphones, there's an audio pass through function, so you can choose to listen to your surroundings. Oh, okay. Yes. I, I don't want to, I, I mean, I'm happy to talk about my product. I don't want to plug too much on myself. <laughs> it's a great context, a great starting point for the conversation. Um, yeah, so in the context of most noise canceling headphones, you've already got mics. So what they do is you push a button, it takes that sound, and instead of flipping it and canceling, it plays it inside the headphone environment, so you can hear it or even amplify it. Uh, and that's that's a generally available feature on noise canceling headphones. Uh, but by default, you would not hear nearly as much sound as somebody was speaking. So generally, people talk about mass being the only thing that really stops sound from going through. You're talking about lightweight construction. And I'm trying to figure out how that works. Like, is there is there some is there some secret to the structures that so yeah. or little vacuums in there? Or, I mean, how yeah. So there's a bunch of different things that we're doing. Uh, and just to sort of briefly touch on it, you've got density and elasticity of materials, higher density and lower elasticity. Uh, but doing that in a way that doesn't make a brittle object. Uh, then you have um, variants of, of materials. If you alternate materials, so if you have very thin layers. Uh, changing materials actually also slows down that sound wave. Uh, and then on top of that, if you have, for instance, microscopic, uh, like conical structures and uh, uh, shapes that will effectively bounce and redirect that sound, all of these things combine to do a very good job of blocking, absorbing, and deflecting or diffusing uh, passive, you know, high frequency sound. Again, with low frequency sound, 
it doesn't care as much. It's just kind of just plodding along and just sneaks in. But. Uh, other questions? I feel like I'm doing better in the questions part. Cool. So at least I hope everyone's got a firm grasp of the basics of how cancelling, uh, how noise cancelling works, or reduction. <laughs>